All right, real quick before I start this, this is a video about looking for moiré, okay? So if people have problems with the way I pronounce it, I don't know if it's moiré or moiré or whatever, I do know the proper spelling, and you'll see that in the description. And so I'm just trying to show you as many shots as possible where that shimmery kind of aliasing showed up in my shots in the past. And I'm just honestly trying to decide how important it is to me and whether or not I need to obsess over it. So, you know, I'm showing you as many human-made objects as I can as opposed to nature. And, you know, look for the difference. I mean, personally, I, well, you know what? I don't even want to say anything that'll have you judge it before you see it. Just check out the video. Um, I think it looks beautiful. The Panasonic S5 is a killing camera. I'm using the Sigma 28 to 70 f 2.8 because that's the lens that brought me the moiré or the aliasing before. And so check it out and see what happens. And, you know, if you have a problem with the way I pronounce it, go watch another video. You know, I'm doing my best. Check it out. All right, so I have a serious character flaw. Or, I don't know, I think a lot of people who know me think it's a character flaw, but, you know, I think also it's like something that serves me really well, at least in my work um, and in my life in general, you know? And you know how they say, like, the very thing that attracted you to me is the same thing that made you hate me? Well, that's the story of my life. Um, I obsess over things and I'm really meticulous about stuff and I just can't let things go sometimes. You know, if something's bothering me, I gotta figure it out. You know, I can't, I can't just let anything just sit there, you know? I just can't seem to do that. And so, yeah, I have this thing about me that, you know, eventually turns people away from me, um, which has been very painful in my life, I'm being really honest. But um, at the same time, it kind of makes me who I am too, and I like who I am. Um, so, in this case, I'm talking about moiré in the camera, which, you know, in the grand scheme of things in life is really not all that important, right? But I saw it and I'm on this journey right now of trying to eliminate it from my life, this moiré, this shimmery stuff that ruins shots. And so today I'm shooting things that have gotten moiré to show up in some of my filmmaking, seeing if I could recreate it because I've been thinking a lot about upgrading my camera to Panasonic S1H, which would cost me a lot of money. Or maybe a Panasonic GH5S, which has a optical low pass filter, but which would be a pretty, pretty significant downgrade from the Panasonic S5 overall in terms of usability you know, the S5 is a more modern camera, so I don't know. <laughs> but I'm trying to find it, so is it even important? Is it important? Is it important is like the dumbest question I've ever heard in my life, you know, whether it comes to personal relationships or certainly filmmaking, theater, art, sports, cleaning your bathroom. <laughs> I mean, is it important? Of course it's important. Like you want something that looks like shit in your movie? Come on, it's ridiculous. I mean, if something's ruining a shot, if you've worked so hard to create a story, if you've taken the time to write a script, if you, you know, take the time to like spend your, spend your, all your thought processes 
coming up with an idea and then you actually write a script and you format it properly and you know you do all kinds of revisions and you work with a director and a dramaturge and you know you just work so hard to get to the point where you're shooting something you want moire in one of your shots to ruin everything like you know of course yeah so some say go by really fast people won't notice whatever but of course it's important you know just like in relationships, you know, when things happen between people, you know, is it important? Of course, it's important. If it's important to somebody, it's meaningful, period. And you got to figure it out because if you don't figure it out, then it just sits there and it never goes away. It never changes and it can ruin everything, you know. And sometimes, you know, you let go of things that, you know, are like irrevocable, you know, because you didn't take the time to be a little bit more specific or a little bit more fearless in trying to fix it. So anyway, sorry I digress, but moire is caused very often by man-made things, you know, human-made things. I hate the term man-made, human-made things. Like the roof of this building, for example, is what caused me a lot of moire. And so I'm trying to recreate it and also I notice that I get the moiré when I'm using this lens that I'm using right now, the Sigma 28 to 70 f 2.8, because it's my only autofocus lens. It's my only sharp uh, modern lens. All of my lenses are either anamorphic or uh, vintage lenses. And so, yeah, it's sharper. And that could definitely contribute to the moiré. So, I don't know. Can you see it? Does it matter to you? Is it important? <laughs> so stupid. So, with regards to moiré, repeatable patterns cause moiré. You know, like when people wear clothes, like if you ever go on set, they'll tell you not to wear, you know, polka dots or striped shirts or something like that because they're repeatable and the camera has problems processing that or like the roof of a building has repeatable patterns like the shingles you know it's just like nothing is random that human beings make and nature is more random and so the camera can pick that up more easily because it doesn't have to repeat it over and over and over again they're pixels so that's the problem with moiré and I saw it well let me show you a different angle and I'll explain what I'm talking about. So give me a second here. So moiré. One of the biggest culprits of moiré would be a pair of jeans like this because you know, denim has like this finely, you know, sewn together patterns, you know? Like if you look closely at your pants, you'll see that it's like, kind of like a bunch of lines crossing with each other or kind of, I was gonna say X's and O's, but just lines crossing and you see boxes and, and so it's repeatable patterns. And so the last time I saw Moiré really badly was when I was sitting similar to this on my jeans. So I think what I'm gonna do is get a little bit more of a close-up shot and see if that makes a difference. Like right now, I don't know, you know, because I'm shooting right now, I won't know until I get back to my computer to see if I really have any more ray. But um, I'm gonna do a little bit more of a close-up and see. And, um, you know, on the subject again <laughs> of being obsessed, you know, I wonder, how much it really does matter, you know? Um, obviously, if it's in a shot where it really lasts a long time, obviously it matters. But, you know, if you're shooting something serious, like a feature length film or something like that, you should have a monitor where you can actually see what's going on before you shoot it, or monitor it after you shot it and make sure that everything worked out and, and so that if there's a problem, you could reshoot it right away. But, um, you know, I just shot a feature film and I just used the monitor on this S5, you know, the monitor that's on the camera. Like, I didn't have an external monitor 
And I didn't see Moray even for one shot during the entire film. I shot for almost two years. It never came up. So it, it's just, it's making me think about so much stuff, you know. It's making me think like, am I obsessing, you know? Am I holding on to something that doesn't really matter? Am I, am I wasting my time, you know, looking at a million videos of the S1H and the GH5S and, you know, thinking about maybe even adding a, a, a filter into this camera for 600 bucks because there's a company that actually adds an optical low pass filter to your camera if you want. And I'm just like, I've been consumed with it. And it's making me think a lot about my personal life too and the way I am and the way I am set in my ways and the way that, you know, when I know something is right, it's right, you know, and I'm not very flexible. And, um, but you know, I look at that as a good thing, but I also am coming to understand that it's not always so good. Um, that sometimes you gotta pick your battles, that sometimes the best, the best way to be right is to not be right, just let it go. Let somebody else be right, you know. Even when you know that maybe technically or tangibly they're wrong and maybe in your you know, intellectual mind you just can't do that, maybe if you have a higher spiritual self, which should be above your intellectual self, in my opinion, that sometimes you just gotta let it go. It's the best way to do it. Like, you know, sometimes people even know that they're wrong, but they just want you to let them be right, you know? Like sometimes it's just a matter of giving to somebody, of just, you know, handing somebody something and saying, you know what, you got, you got it this time. Like, okay, it's fine. And why, like what's the reason for that? Because you love somebody, you know, you care about them. And people are flawed, you know, people are fucked up. And sometimes we're not necessarily right or absolutely correct, you know, not literally, but sometimes, you know, oftentimes people talk about things that they're not even really talking about. Like there's all kinds of subtext. It's like being in the theater or being in the movies, you know, like if you're an actor, a lot of your work is subtext. You know, what's going on underneath the words that you're saying? What's impacting the words that you're saying? What, what's bringing the emotion to the script, you know, to the story, to the dialogue. It's like, you know, maybe you were abused as a child or maybe you had a fight with somebody 20 minutes ago in the grocery store or, you know, maybe there's something going on in the world that's really bothering you and you're just acting out of character with somebody and they're like, yo, what the fuck is wrong with you? And it's got nothing to do with the conversation that you're having. And I think to be human, to be a good person, to be able to interact and have relationships you have to understand that it's not always literal. It's not always exactly what it is tangibly, you know, intellectually. It ain't, that ain't it all the time. That ain't it. And so, you know, it's just making me wonder about this too. And I don't even know if one has anything to do with the other. By the way, I'm also using autofocus, which I never do. Well, I'm actually manually focusing, but I'm using the autofocus on this camera to capture the focus of where I'm sitting. So that will even, you know, make the moray show up even more if it's happening. So, you know, my pants are pretty well lit by the sun. I hate shooting in these kind of conditions. It's the sun is directly over my head. But um, I'm wondering if, I'm getting that swirly disgustingness in my pants right now. My jeans, especially when I bend my knees like this and I stretch out the fabric, that's when it could really show up. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Let's see.
And so, with regards to this whole, you know, meticulous nature of mine, this holding on to things and not letting go, this kind of inflexibility that I have, you know, with regards to my work, you know, I tell people even in workshops that I teach, you know, I'm like, don't ever negotiate with yourself, you know. You're never going to get what you want out of your work or out of, you know, anything that you do if you negotiate with yourself. Like, I'm not going to get up at 4.30 in the morning to work out. Well, then you're not going to get in the shape that you want to get into, you know. I'm not going to spend six hours, you know, memorizing my script. Then you're never going to be able to memorize a two and a half hour script. You know, like you have to have discipline, you know. You have to be inflexible with certain things. You know, people think that I could just get up on stage and do that without working, you know, or I can make these films without working, like I could just make a movie. It doesn't work that way, you know? Like you have to be inflexible, you have to sacrifice, and you know, that's life. You know, a lot of things go by the wayside because of that. You know, life is about choices, right? But I'm learning as I get older, I guess, that, you know, with regards to relationships, it's not the same, you know what I mean? Like, you have to be flexible, you have to figure out ways to get around it. Otherwise, you're just gonna be doing shit by yourself forever, you know? That's the conundrum. And uh, I don't know, know why I'm even talking about that right now, so. You know, don't negotiate with yourself when it comes to your work and your art and when you're trying to like really be great at something, when you're trying to maximize your potential, you have to have discipline, you have to have commitment, you have to have dedication, you know, you, you have to be willing to go above and beyond to be able to accomplish things. But when it comes to people, it's kind of a double-edged sword, on the one hand, don't stay around with people that feel toxic for you, you know. There are situations where there are people who you need to let go of your life. Just get them out, you know, like, let it go. You know what I mean? Because you're just tied up with people that it's just familiar. It's like being in a fucked up relationship. Like, you know, sometimes people are in physically abusive relationships and they stay there because it feels familiar because maybe they were abused as children or whatever the reason is. Sometimes you got to let it go. Sometimes you got to get out, you know. But in the circumstances where you love somebody, where you care about somebody, be flexible, let them be right. Don't always, don't always feel like you need to be right all the time because like I said before, you know, intellectual and spiritual health are two different things. And you, know, you have to learn how to combine them in a healthy manner. You, know? you can't always be the leader, you know, the one who calls the shots. You can't always be you know, the person making the decisions. You can't always be right. You know, and you know, also there are times where you might be intellectually right, but maybe the perspective or the point of view that somebody else is bringing might hold some kind of value as well. So yeah, there are times where you gotta let it go, no question, you know? But there are other times where you shouldn't. And so in this case with the moiré, to bring this full circle, I'm going to check out this video and I'm going to see, you know, like, what, what happens when you try to get moiré? Or is it just so random that you can't control it? I mean, I think a pretty good case study is the fact that I did a feature-length film for two years and didn't see it once. I only saw it in a YouTube video, but in that feature film I only used um, my vintage lenses, a 28 and a 50, these two Minolta lenses. So. I don't know, you know, I don't think I'm going to upgrade. I love this S5 so much, you know, I love the way it shoots. Again, I don't get attached to stuff, you know, these physical objects, these cameras. But if it's working for me, if I like the way the monitor looks, if I like the if I can, if it's capable of doing everything basically that I want to do, then why would I upgrade just for moiré and 24 frames per second if 24 allows me to get a DCP and if chances are I'm not going to find much moiré, what's the big deal? You know what I mean? Like. 
do I really need to go spend basically another grand or two grand to get the S1H? Or do I have to like kind of downgrade my camera to a GH5S and have no stabilization and, you know, start to rely upon a gimbal again, which I, I hate, you know? Be a better person, be smarter, be more flexible, make informed decisions, do your research, do your due diligence, you know, grow your empathy, grow yourself spiritually, grow yourself intellectually, and just do the best that you can. You know, that's what life is. I mean, life is one day at a time, just doing the best we can, trying to hang in there until you're not here anymore, which happens and should never be taken for granted. You know, I watched a, I watched the uh, video I made called Held by Ransom last night and I was crying like a baby because I realized that my friend Sandy is gone, you know? She was younger than me, like she died of cancer. She fought it for like five years, you know, six years. And uh, she's not here, you know, my best friend, Gene Giles, you know, he's dead. He died so young, 41 years old, I think, or 42, you know, he died. I mean, nothing's promised, you know, so just do the best you can. And I guess the best advice I could give, don't be an asshole. <laughs>